Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how we can set up a custom event called a Unity event inside of our scripts. And then to be able to assign delegates, just like you would with an on-click button, um, in the inspector for Unity, so that basically we can tell a bunch of other mono behavior scripts uh, to do something when our event triggers on this new script we're about to create. So this incredibly basic script called player not null checker, what it's going to do is it's going to check to see if the reference to player here is null or not. And if it returns null, then it's going to trigger our Unity event. So back in Visual Studio, we are going to need to set up a Unity event. And I guess we'll also do a public void update method because we want that to check every frame, roughly speaking. So I'm going to add in public void update and then if player is equal to null still at this point, at any point in time, then it's going to trigger the unity event. So first we obviously have to set up the unity event. So you do that by doing public unity event, not event queue system, but unity event. And we'll just call that unity event be pretty uncreative here. And we can call that player null. And we pull this in from the unity engine.events namespace. So the idea behind a unity event is just like other events like on click methods, except that we need to define our own custom timing for when it calls invoke on all of the methods that are attached to it, all the delegate methods. So here I'm going to add player null, the unity event, and dot invoke when player is equal to null. So that means that whenever player is null, any method that we add in in the Unity inspector is going to trigger at that point in time. Now, just to point out, the other thing I added into the script is that on the awake method, if it sees that the player is already null, it's going to try to find a player controller in the scene to make sure that it really is null, but nothing else to say beyond that. So now that we've created our Unity event inside of the script, it's going to show up in the inspector here. So we can add in delegate methods to be called whenever the invoke method of the event is called. So I'm going to hit plus here and we can basically take in any object, scriptable objects or mono behaviors and drop it in here. So what I'll have happen here is that when the player is equal to null, I'll change the sprite on this game object, the Mama Bernese game object. So dragging the game object into here from the uh, hierarchy and we'll go down to sprite renderer and do sprite. So now we need to select a new sprite for this to be changed into. So I can just grab any sprite game asset. So let's just choose something kind of random here. Uh, that looks like a chest of some sort. So sure, why not? So now that we've set that up, we have our custom event. It's going to trigger when the player is equal to null and we can add in as many delegates as we want into that. So if I run this the first time, it's not going to trigger because the player is going to be grabbed from the game scene. So you can see the script found the player. But what if we disable that part of the code and we don't have it automatically find the player or if we actually disabled the player and the scene? Uh, we'd get the same result either way, which is that it would not be able to find a player and player would be equal to null. So let's run this and see what happens. So as you can see, the moment the game loaded, the uh, event triggered and actually it would be constantly triggering now. Um, probably you should add a boolean variable that once it's triggered you turn it off or something. But you can see how it's pretty easy to create our own custom unity events that allow us to specify delegates inside of the inspector, which can be really useful being able to reference other scripts without having to hard code everything. So just for the sake of better scripting, it would be kind of ridiculous if this event did trigger on every frame with the update method. So what we could do here is add in a public boolean triggered equals false and then this event will only trigger if triggered is equal to false. Basically, it hasn't triggered yet. And then we just set triggered equal to true. You can obviously set up how these Unity events are going to work in whatever way you like. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my future Unity content.